Good morning, everybody. How you doing? I'm doing good. How you, thanks for asking. Um, we're still in this Roman series, uh, but I, I wanted to give um, just a, a, a couple of announcements. We've we've been in this uh, little transition period for for about a year and a half now in this building, and just trusting God day by day, and and, and trusting God for more. Where hoping to have our own, you know, to be able to have something that we call our own. You know, we were talking about it before, me and one of the brothers, that we could have a, a food bank that is accessible all the time, that we have opportunities to pray and, 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 and you know, engage in deliverance with people and, and maybe even put people up with a place to stay if they're experiencing some kind of hardship. There's so many things that that we want to do, we kind of split into two services to make room for for God to move however he sees fit. So I'd ask you this, if you do me a favor, just, just continue to pray, but pray this, if you would. Just pray, God, you, if you call United your home church, and you love this place, I love this place, I know that God loves it more than we'll ever know. It's his church. But if this is, you know, something that you love, just just pray into it and say, God, just I don't I don't know, but I, we're praying for our building, we're praying for the things that you have for our church and our community, so we can be a blessing to the city. Would you Would you commit to doing that for a while? I, I don't expect, you know, I know we get busy and we forget, but as long as you remember, it pops into your mind. Would you do that for me, please? Just pray for us that God would have a, a, an open door and, and we want to move. We want to take a step. I'm, I'm not saying we want to move. I'm saying we want to move through that open door that God opens. We don't want to remain where God was. We want to be where God is. Amen? We don't, we don't want to be in the old. We want to be in the new. Right? Why would you settle for the old? Well, I want to settle for the old because it's broken in. But the new is so much nicer. And by the way, that broken in smells like your booty. The brand new smells nice and fresh and clean. I don't know why I said that it was pretty tough. But your feet, yeah, thank you. I want to I wanna tell you about um, a story. We are in Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Romans chapter 5. We've been in this series, United in the Gospels. We've been taking a journey through the book of Romans we've been unpacking a lot of things that are essential to our faith that I believe that sometimes we gloss over or we move quickly past, never grasp onto, and those are areas in our spiritual walk with the Lord that we struggle. Maybe he's bringing freedom to your past, but you're struggling to accept his promise in the present, so you're falling prey to the past and never moving towards your potential. I'm Puerto Rican, so I can say a lot of peace. I don't know why I said that. I drank some tea today. Maybe it's just set me off a little bit. There was um, a guy. I wish I could show you this picture, but there was a guy. Um, there was a guy, and his name was the Great Blondin. And he was like a... An acrobat, I don't know what you call like the tightrope guys, you know, they, they, that thing. And um, he, he did all kinds of stunts, all kind of kind of like daredevil, like death defying stuff. And he grew this enormous following, this enormous following. And I love history, like, I love, like, nobody judged me. Like, there's still parts of me that wish I grew up into Indiana Jones, you know? You know I, I'm being real. If you went through my kindergarten book, I think it said I wanted to be Auto Man and Indiana Jones. But you you know, you you you're going on a you you're going on this 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 exciting uh, journey following this guy and 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 he's just growing this following and people are seeing these amazing acts. And everybody loves to see his death-defying acts from afar. I'm going somewhere, I promise. 
Everybody loves to see his abilities because they're amazing. Everybody loves to see what he has to offer because he has so much to offer. It's mind-blowing. So one day he gets a wild hair. He goes, I know what I'm going to do. It's never been done. I'm going to get on the tightrope across Niagara Falls. Media press. Pow! Media everywhere. Cameras everywhere. This guy's going to cross Niagara Falls. And there are thousands of people that gather to see the great Blondin cross Niagara Falls. And he gets out there and he's he's actually, I'm not going to, you should look him up on, this is a true story, so you should look him up and see what he looks like. I'm not going to, kind of looks like my great grandfather, Nunzio. Yeah, Harry has a gold chain. He's like, forget about it. But he's the great Blondin. And he's walking and he, he does the whole thing across Niagara Falls. And it's amazing. And it's like record setting. Unbelievable. Beautiful. Great. He goes to do it again. And he says, this time I'm going to do something unbelievable that nobody's ever believed. going to believe. It's going to be mind-blowing. It's going to be the greatest feat that anybody has ever done. And he gathers thousands and thousands of people at Niagara Falls. And he's about to cross over, pulls a wheelbarrow out, pulls a barrel out. And he has thousands of followers, people that spent thousands of dollars into his career, into into seeing him do amazing things from afar, from seeing him do Uh, great feats, mighty acts from afar. But this time, Blondino's, the great Blondin's trick involves somebody else. You see, he gets there and he says, are you amazed? And everybody, yeah! They made that face too. Yeah! Yeah, we're amazed. It's like a gladiator. Are you not entertained? They're like, yeah, we're entertained. Do you want to see it again? Yeah, we want to see it again. Are you guys with me? Yeah, we're with you. All right, somebody get in the wheelbarrow. Oh, no. See, they were with them until they had to be responsible for participation. When it got to the point of being all in, because you got to be all in if you get to get in a wheelbarrow across Niagara Falls. Come on, somebody. You got to be committed. You got to commit. You got to lock in. You got to lock in. I'm just saying. I, I'm afraid of heights. Is anybody in here afraid of heights? Yeah. My blue jeans would be brown jeans by the time you got me to, you know, I, it'd be bad. But they were with him until they had to participate. When I think about, when I think about Paul's experience, when I think about what Paul wrote in Romans, I think about what what I think about the most is Paul's maturity and Paul's intention to teach us a simple truth that will go down to the deepest fibers of your core. And if you can catch on to this, you become rooted in a base that God is in control of your life, though things might happen, though circumstances might be out of your control, God is in control. But that happens through participation. You see, uh, Andre can't come with me to the gym, and I lift weights, and then I go run the track, and then I go to the locker room, and Andre's there waiting for me, and stretching. Woo! <laughs> I'm like, Dre, what's up, dog? He's like, man, whoo, that workout was vicious. I said, I, I just saw you go straight to the locker room. Yeah, but you were working hard, man. Woo! You were working hard. See, he's watching me do all the work. I'm lifting, but I'm getting stronger. He's not. He's just watching. You got to get in. You got to get into the gym. You got to lift the weight. You got to participate. But in order to do it well, you need this. Pastor, I I need deep. No, you need foundation. Let me ask you a question. 
Have you ever seen a foundation poured? Have you ever seen it building? In order to set a proper foundation, you have to dig two times the size of the weight that you're supporting. What's deeper than that? What is deeper than foundation? Than, than, than standing in truth in the word of God. And this is what the writer is saying to us. Sin and death entered the world through Adam. Not through me. Come on, guys. Don't judge me. Through Adam. Adam and Eve. Forget about it. But grace and righteousness came through the second Adam, who is Jesus Christ. Where the first Adam failed, the second Adam succeeded. What does it mean? Every person born into the world is related to Adam by flesh and blood. Adam's sin in the Garden of Eden plunged all of mankind into sin and death. The only way to escape the judgment and condemnation of being in Adam is to accept God's gift of righteousness through a spiritual... This is the only way. It's the only way. You will never gain anything just watching. You can search the world go everywhere, try to do everything, take every class, but until it becomes real in your heart, it doesn't matter. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would give us great grace. I feel a stir in my spirit, Lord God, and I just want to be obedient to you, Lord. We need more peace. We need greater joy, Lord God, and that comes through more trust more trust in you, Lord God, more surrender to you. Every time we surrender, Lord God, every time we let go what you what you put back in is so much greater, so much better for us than we know, than we could imagine. And that's kind of where we struggle, Lord. So would you just speak to those places today where we're struggling to surrender? We were struggling to completely trust. And I thank you, God, that we can wrestle, but we're wrestling together in your house. We can figure it out, Lord God, together in your house. As the body of Christ, as a quorum of believers, Lord God, coming together, activating our faith, praying, joining our prayers together, Lord God, being so much stronger together, Lord God. We thank you for these moments. So speak, Lord. God, reveal your word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Every person born into the world, right? We already, um, we already started talking through this a couple of weeks ago as we entered into the book of Romans, starting with the wrath of God, and everybody was like, I don't know if I want to be a part of the book of Romans. And then we got through the wrath of God, and we started entering in to the promises of God. And I'm calling them promises of God because they're appointed to you upon the point of salvation. So when you enter in, when you say, I don't know how to make it any easier than this, but when you say yes to Jesus, there is a transfer, a blood infusion, if you will. And, and it's being drained out. I, I, I told you guys I, I love history. Like, I really love history. And I was watching... Um, this thing on, on uh, ancient Egypt and, and how the Israelites, um, it, it, it was just this thing. And then they were talking about like the practices of the day and, and medicines. And that's the stuff that I, like I'm interested in because, I, I mean, it's kind of, it's a long time ago. They had different tools, different means of doing things. You know, we complicate things. I was watching one of the things we spent the CIA in 1982 spent $2 million on a spy kitty. What? It's a spy kitty. They, they implanted a microphone in a cat, and uh, they trained the cat to spy on people. What they never trained the cat to do was cross the street. <laughs> they opened up the van and gave the cat the do, 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 do orders and 
Two seconds later, the cat was gone. Two million dollars. Two million dollars. So sometimes it's good to just be simple, just be easy, right? Just be, what were they planning to do? Take every cat in the world? I wouldn't mind it, but. Sorry, cat people. I love cats. Um, so what, what I, I was watching is, is just ancient ways, ancient methods. And one of the things that they were talking about was um, some remedies or cures. And one of the things was bloodletting. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. It's a practice that has been around for centuries. It's like um, they, they poke a hole almost in a vein and they let, the, the, the thought is to let old blood out so your cells can produce healthy new cells. So it was like letting the old out and letting, letting healthy new cells reproduce to heal whatever. And they, they thought like that was, a, you know, that was a big deal. And it did work to some extent. It did, it, it, it did work in some situations. But if you could see in the spirit, this is what we're saying. Upon receipt of salvation, there's a transfusion that happens. And you are opened up. You really are opened up. And the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, Jesus Christ, who, he, the, the, the moment we enter into relationship, it's almost like a scraper comes in with these two claws and it puts its arm around our crap and our junk and it pulls it back like this. And now what's left is a space. Right? I removed the junk. Now what's left is a space. And this is where we struggle. I, I need to find something to put there. And then we go everywhere and we do everything. It's, it's, it, it's our nature, our sinful nature to be sinful. It's our godly nature. I want you to write this down. It's our sinful nature to be sinful. It's our godly nature to be godly. I'm not calling you God, but I'm saying it's our old person that, that, that lived as a relative to the first Adam, if I could say it like that. Does that make sense? Where we need to live as relatives of Jesus Christ. So if you're living in sin, then accept the consequences of that. But if you're entering into relationship with Christ, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, accept the consequences of that. See, we have language that we use that we think is just over here, but you, it's language that we could use in church. It's language that we could use everywhere. The world could say things. Why can't I say things, Right? Yeah, you have to make a choice. You either choose to do something good or you choose to do something wrong. You either accept the gift or you turn it away. You either open the Amazon box or you leave it closed. Why'd you get it then if you're going to leave it closed, never open it and see what's inside or use it? It's what we do in the spirit. So I've cleaned out the junk. I have the space. I got to find something to put back in the space. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm going to chase the world looking for it. Meanwhile, what goes in that space, what fits perfectly, is the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, but you have to believe it. You have to believe it the same way that you are fine believing that you are a loser, the same way that you are fine believing that you're a liar, the same way that you are fine believing that life will never get better, that this is all, this is, this is all, this always happens to me. This is all I'll ever be. This is all I'll ever get. You're right. If you remain in that, if you stay in that, you're right. Because what you're doing is you're putting in that space, in that place, yourself. You, you're not, it's, it's not, it's not Lord, it's not God worship, it's not Jesus worship, it's self-idolatry. 
What do you mean? I'm, I don't pray to myself. No, you don't pray to yourself, but, but you're, you're never content. You're never happy. You, you're never joyful. You never have peace, which tells me that this is a lot about you. See, the joy of the Lord is my strength, not the joy of Adam is my strength. Adam's joy is limited to anything that makes him happy or makes him smile. So if there's nothing that makes me happy or makes me smile, I'm not smiling. But the joy of the Lord is accessible. The joy of the Lord is providential. That means it resides in me, around me, over me. So what I'm searching for, what I'm looking for is already found. It's already in place. It's already there for me. I just got to get it and bring it over here. And that's, this is it. This is the hiccup. Getting it and bringing it over here because then we struggle with, with self-talk, with self-doubt, with fear, with pain, with anxiety. And we move away from the fact that Jesus died for you. What, what is, he just made that sound really easy. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for you. Luke 2 verse 10 says this. The angel said to them, fear not. Everybody say, fear not. not. For behold, I bring you good news. Everybody say, good news. news. Of great joy. Everybody say, great joy. joy. That will be for all the people. Somebody say, all. all. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. I want to Just hit on verse 1. I don't think I'm going to leave verse 1 of Romans chapter 5. I want to talk to you about grace and glory. I want to talk to you really about a a, a clearer understanding of what culture is screening, if I could put it that way. Everybody wants to decide for you. Everybody wants to make up your mind. Everybody, let me put it this way. Everybody else has a great plan for your life, if you'll let them. Everybody else has a great plan for your life if you'll let them. I love the word of the Lord here. It's so simple. It's so clean, and we muddy these waters. We make it so dirty. We make it so hard. I'd like, And we love doing it. Come on, somebody. Right? Like, be truthful. Like, we love doing it. We love messing stuff up. We love getting in the way. God, I, I need you to move. I need you to work in my life. But I also know that you really, really need my help. So, so you start and then I'll finish. The angel said to them, fear not. Don't, don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid about what they say because here's what I say. Don't be afraid about how they mock because I'm, I'm with you. Don't, don't be afraid about what people are going to say if you share Jesus with somebody. They can mock Jesus, but when you say Jesus, they say toxic or something. But, but all these things, all these other things are acceptable. Why? Because Christians, they're not going to protest in the streets. Christians aren't going to fight us. They're not going to say anything. We could, we could, we could smash them into pieces. The point is standing with an inner peace, standing with an inner strength that only comes in the most elementary way, understanding the basic principle that Jesus Christ died for you. He took all your sin and shame. He conquered sin and death, defeated it on the cross. Jesus said, all things are possible if you would what? Believe. We could believe what the world says because everybody's saying it, so it must be true. It must be my truth. My. I'm experiencing this. You don't even know what this is. You you don't even know what this is, right, Michelle? You know what I'm saying? You don't even know what this is. Honey, you don't even know what this is. You're not even grown enough to know what this is. You haven't lived long enough to know what this is. But culture is screaming it, and culture is trying to dominate our perception of who Jesus Christ is. 
in this, in this earth, in this world. Culture is trying to tell us that we can go there, but we can't really go there because of other people's feelings and other people's emotions and other people's point of views. What about our feelings? What about our emotions? What about our point of views? Pastor Adam, are you getting political? No. No, I'm not. I'm getting relational. I'm not getting political. I'm getting relational. I'm talking about when the Bible says that, 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 that glory and grace through Jesus. I have it. Uh, who am I? Who, who am I to ju- be Jesus' judge? Who, who am I to be the, the creator of heaven's judge? The creation doesn't get to judge the creator. My kids want to come up to me and say, Dad, uh, blah, 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 money. I'm going to kick you down the stairs. I won't. I'm so, my kids are grown. That's how you, I used to, though. Um, I didn't. I never did. That's why his face looks like that. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, what does that mean? It requires faith to you to accept, for you to accept the promises of God. Just like it takes faith or trust or whatever you want to call it to accept anything else. But, but we, we find discomfort in the world, which we should, because we're not of this world. We're just passing through. But we find discomfort in the world and we get agitated about it. We're not meant to be comfortable in this world. Don't be surprised by it. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart because I've overcome the world. And now I live in you, and you carry the same power that I am. Not that I carry, the same power that I am. Therefore, since we have, everybody say have. Past tense, right? Is anybody smart, smart, smart about that stuff? Yeah, thank you. Have, have, done, done deal. Meaning when you say yes to Jesus, it's a yes to Jesus. Don't second guess him. Don't second guess what he thinks about you. Don't second guess what he says about you. We all have bad pasts. Let's get through it. Let's, let's get, build a bridge. My mom used to say all the time, it was her, it was her, she, she, she would travel, speak to women. This was her, her big zinger line. Build a bridge and get over it, blood. Build a bridge and get over it. Right? She used to say that all the time. We, we got we to gotta move on. Some of us get handicapped, and it's hard for us to move on. We get stuck because we don't enter into a conscious recognition that the truth of God is the truth for my life. No other truth for my life. This is the truth for my life. And this is what it says. It says that I have been justified by faith. Who am I to call God a liar? Justification is the act of God whereby he forgives the unsaved person's sin and assigns to them the righteousness of Christ when through faith they believe. He's assigned it to you. He's assigned to you righteousness through Christ. He's assigned it to you. You have been assigned. Isn't that a great word? If you've never said it, say it with me one time. Assigned. It feels good, right? Assigned. It also sounds like martial arts or something. Assigned. That felt good. Romans 5, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have what? This is it. This is today's message. We have what? We have what? Come on, people. Say it with me. Come on. We have peace. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained, meaning also it has already been given, already been done. Obtained, obtained, received, taken hold of it, obtained access by faith. Into this grace in which we, what? Stand. 
and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. I'm going to give you three things, three, three results of justification real quick. Number one. The reason I'm doing this is because I, I see it. I see it all over the place. I see it in culture. I see it. I see it in the church. I see it. I see it everywhere. People struggling with with elementary things, with the basics, with with just the ground level of what you believe, the ground level of how you trust. And we're wrestling with ourselves and we're fighting with ourselves. And God's called us redeemed. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And we're acting like it's not true. We fight with God like it's not true. I I, I don't care. I don't care if you're saying, no, I never do it. Well, good. You might might be an angel here on earth. Thank you, Jesus. But, you know, we wrestle in that. We, We struggle through that because we miss out on this step right here. Peace with God. Peace with God. The result, the first result of justification is peace with God. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have, have, everybody say have, have access. These things, these are the, the, the promises of God. We're looking for, for principles and policies when we're neglecting the promises. We, 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 we want, if, if you could give me 10 steps Ten steps on how to get there. If you, what's the silver bullet? Woo, man, you started that business, that thing exploded. What's the silver bullet? Y'all started that church, it grew to 10,000 overnight. What's the silver bullet? There ain't no silver bullet. It's trust, it's belief, it's faith. It's trust, it's belief, it's faith. And you start with this, having peace with God. Step one, peace with God, an unshakable peace in your heart that you know that God is for you and he's not waiting to pull your card. He's not waiting to kick you out. God is for you. John 1 verse 12 says, To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, He gave the right to become children of God. You're in. Somebody say, I'm in. in. You don't have to pledge. You don't have to try. You don't have to. You're in. So start living like you're in. Come on, somebody. Start living like you're in. Start living. And I'm talking to me. I'm preaching to myself. I'm, I'm certainly preaching to my son. I'm just kidding. I've been picking on you all day. I, you know, I'm just preaching to our whole family. Like, we got to get things right in us. And dad can't do it for you. Mom can't do it for you. You can't come to the gym and watch me lift weights and never touch a weight and expect to get strong. You have to learn how to lift for yourself. You have to learn what that, re- that intimate relationship with Jesus Christ looks like for you. And walk accordingly. And try your best. And put all your faith and your hope that Jesus' word is true. That God's word is the infallible truth. And I believe the word of God. Who am I to call God a liar when he calls me made righteous by Jesus Christ? Who am I to say, no, I'm not. I was a liar and a cheat and a thief. You were, but now you are redeemed by Jesus Christ. Yes, maybe you were. I was. I was probably worse than y'all. I've been arrested. I've been in car accidents. I had 460 stitches in the right side of my face. Broke both my collarbones. And even lied in that. I was driving a car under the influence. And I picked up the person in the passenger seat. Two broken collarbones. Put them in the driver's seat so I wouldn't get arrested. As soon as I put the person down, I just felt something hot, and I went like that, and I saw just blood running down my arm. And the next thing I know, I'm in the ambulance. But that's not who Christ designed me to be. That's what Adam was pursuing, but that's not who Adam is. 
See, your past doesn't define you. Your problems do not. Listen to me. Get this through your thick skull. Get it through your thick skull. Pastor, you can't talk to me like that. I love you. You're my family. That's how I talk to my family. I'm sorry. You could go to another church that doesn't want family. They got 13 steps to, to find $15. But we need to just get this, just get it into our head. We, we really, we really just need to understand and just get it into our heads that God has chosen you, that God is crazy mad in love with you, that God is for you. He's not against you, that weapons might form, but they can't prosper, that all the promises of God are yes and amen. I, I, we, you, we have to really just dig our heels down because culture and everything else is saying the opposite. Culture wants you to go with the flow, go with the trend, go with what's cool, go with what's hip. I don't even know what's cool and what's hip anymore. I, you, you, you go, there's so many trends, so many whims, so many, so many things. I, I still wear skinny jeans, I think. I don't know. I, do people still wear these? I don't know. My daughter looks at me weird. She's like, Dad, what are you wearing? She's doing it right now. She's judging me. She's just like me. Second result of justification is access to grace. Listen, these, these things are very, very, I mean, these things are so deep. And, and a lot of believers, right? I, the, I mean, these things are so deep. And a lot of believers, they kind of, they kind of get stuck or they gloss past them. And, and, and in moments of frustration, we don't remember these things, but we want to be someplace else doing something else. Maybe you're fired up for Jesus and you mean well, but you're still, you're just not trusting. Your, your, your mouth is saying yes, but everything else is saying no. I, I want to trust him. But you don't show up. You, you're not available. You're not teachable. You, you don't want to grow. You're the I know person. Every time somebody wants to help you, I know. So then why are you in this again? I know. Why are you saying I know? I know. I'm good. Then why are you bad? I'm good. Why, what's going on in your life? I'm all right. And just, just really just knowing that through his word, he's telling us that we have access to grace, that in him we have peace, peace to know that we can stand firm in our relationship. Listen to me, y'all. Doesn't it feel good? Wouldn't it feel good to not have to worry about a relationship for a little bit? Come on, Come on like real talk, right? Whew. Like not worry about a relationship, like another unhealthy relationship, like another relationship where you're carrying people and trying to help people that don't want to be helped and don't care. Like, isn't that, isn't that like, you feel the weight of that sometimes or a family member that just drives you crazy. I don't even, I, you know, I mean, people, you know, co-workers that drive you crazy and, 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 and you're struggling and everybody else is having a good time. Why are they having a good time when I'm struggling? I wish they were struggling just like me. What we're talking about is a piece that says one foot, two foot firm. It's okay. It's okay what you're doing. It's okay what you're doing. I, I don't even care. I'm worried about what I'm doing. I, I'm learning how to mind my own business. And in minding my own business means I got to start ignoring some things. And I don't want to hurt your feelings, but you're one of the things that I need to ignore. Because your attitude is driving me crazy. Listen to me, folks. Maybe you're saying this to yourself. Adam, you, you need to stop. Because you're telling people to put their hope in Christ, and you're acting like you don't know Christ. Whom the sun sets freed is freed indeed. There's no second guessing. If you believe that God is good, then he's good. Believe it. Walk in it. If you believe that you're healed, believe it. Walk in it. If you believe that God is your provider, be, walk in it. Walk. Be bold and walk in it. Listen to what the word 
of God says. It says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. The violent take it by force. We have to be bold and effective. The only way to be bold and effective is when you're confident. It's hard to be bold and effective when you're not confident. Because then you're insecure. You're unsure. But when you can be confident, you can be bold and you can get after it. We've been justified by faith. We have peace with God. Man, these aren't... These aren't maybes. These aren't, you, you, you can try it and see if it happens. These are promises that God has for you. Promises. Firm foundation. You can't get firmer than this. You can't get more truthful, more solid than this. He's given us peace in our relationship with him, to know that every word he says is true, to know that his promises are yes and amen, to know that he's making a way because the second step of justification is access to grace. Now I'm standing in the place of grace, and the race I'm running is the pace of grace. I'm not running your race. I'm running my race. I'm not running at your pace. I'm running my race at my pace. I'm accessing the grace of God, and I know that God's grace is sufficient. See, when, when you can really start putting your hope and your trust, and it goes beyond lip service, and it goes beyond talk, and it moves past your mouth, and it really, really hits your heart, and you start to believe I, there's freedom in it. There, there's power in it. There's joy in it. The presence of God is just, he, he, he's, he's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for, for us to stand in, in, in the authority that he's given to us and be bold for him. Be bold in our faith. Romans 5 verse 2 goes on to say, through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. We don't sit. We don't lay. We don't fall asleep. My legs hurt. My back hurts. I Join the club. Everybody else's back hurts. I, what, what do you want me to say? But I know the word of God says to stand. When all else has failed, stand. And in standing, we access grace. We stand in the grace of God to overcome. What happens when you're standing? When you're sitting, you don't have a clear view. Somebody's head might get in the way. If you're laying down, you definitely don't have a clear view, nor do you have the opportunity or, or the access to like be, be activated quickly. You have to get up, and you have to, if you're me, you have to get up, and you have to... Put some WD-40 in your knees and all this kind of stuff before you can get going. I need time, but if I'm standing, I'm ready. If I'm standing, I'm ready. And you are already accessing God's grace. We already have access. Listen to this. These are not things that we're hoping for, we're guessing for, we're, we're trusting God one day to give to us. These are things that we have in us. So if you want to go to there, you got to start right here. If you want more, you got to know what the more is for. In order to know what the more is for, you got to know what you're made for. Through him, we have access. Somebody say access. Access to what? Access to grace. Meaning what? Meaning what you need it to be. Not, not what you want it to be, not maybe what you're designed, but what you need. See, that's how God's going to work. He's going to give you, he's going to give you what he knows is right for you. He, he, he doesn't waste, he doesn't squander. So he gives seed to the sower when the sower is ready to sow the seed. He doesn't waste it. 
But when we're accessing faith, when we're, when we're accessing the grace, when we're, when we're walking in this grace and, and we're sincerely in pursuit of Jesus Christ and we're standing, we can see clearly so we know what our objective is, understanding that John, John 14, verse 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the, and the, no one comes to the Father except through me. Well, you don't, I'm taking these um, classes, and I'm going to get a certification, and no one goes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Well, I just, I graduated um, top of my college class. I'm, I'm like, going to get a job making 650000 Yep, I'm just not going to sit behind a computer and do it. That's great. I want you to do that. And God can open those doors, but there's no better way than to have that door open by the person that created it. Amen. There's nobody who understands how it functions, how it works, or how it stays healthy than the person that made it. See, if you go into my garage, I'm, I, I got a man's garage. My, my family thinks it's a messy garage. I think it's a man's garage. A man's garage is supposed to be a little messy. But they'll go in my garage. The kids are playing downstairs or hanging out downstairs or doing whatever they do. I don't know. There's music, hip-hop music and all kinds of stuff and TikTok dances and stuff. <laughs> and uh, I, I go in my garage and my doors are crooked, but I have shims. <laughs> They're on studs. You know, it's, it's, it's you know, there's no sheetrock. It's just... But I have shims. And if you go here, the garage door is kept up by the little metal thingy that I found that I put in the thingy. It's my garage. I know how it works. I know why I put it there. It, does, it, 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 might, not, it might not have even been created for that purpose. But it'll work. It'll work. You, you didn't intend for this to happen, but God's going to make it work. You didn't think life was going to be like this, but God's going to make it. Now we're talking about the peace with God, guys. Now we're talking about that because there's going to be confusion. There's going to be chaos. The world is a mess, but I have peace with God. I'm accessing grace. I have access to grace. I have peace with God, so I'm not getting shaken by this stuff. I'm slowing down here. Me and one of the brothers were talking. We're almost, it's, it's weird. Our lives, God has us going like this. We're going through the same things at the same time. And both of us with sleep, you know, we're struggling with sleep a little bit. And when you don't sleep, right, I, it messes your whole, it messes everything up, right? Like, you, you get to the point sometimes where you're like, is, am I dreaming? Like, like, is is this real? Like, like, is this, is this real? But I, I, I need to live. I need to live, no matter what's going on in my life, and stuff is going to be going. Stuff is going to happen. Come on, somebody. And we're not speaking into that. We're just we're saying we know, but we're also saying we're ready. Come on, somebody. That's what we're saying. We're not. We're not speaking to, oh, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm expecting a ton of problems. No, 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 no. But I have peace with God, and I have access to grace, and this is where a lot of people miss it. They want to get this far down the road, but they, they never really sink their teeth into this. And they struggle with peace with God, which turns into inner turmoil because they're struggling with peace with themselves, peace with their past, peace with their current, all kinds of stuff, and never really stopping, slowing down and saying, God, I trust you. God, I trust you. God, I trust you. I have peace with you. I have access to grace. Through him, we have obtained access. We've received it. Ephesians 3, verse 12. Zach, you can come up. Ephesians 3, verse 12 says, because of Christ and our faith in him. Come on, somebody. We can boldly. You, did, have you ever, 
have, have you ever, like, gotten bold about anything? You know what I mean, like, like, like bold, like, like taking a stand, like, like no more. I, I don't know if you've ever experienced that. I've experienced it. I, I, I experience it all the time, actually. Like, sometimes I'll feel defeated, and then I get my legs right and my mind right, and, and I, I access grace. He's graced me to run the race at his pace. But, I, but I'm accessing and I'm believing. Now, this whole trust system, think about this, come on. This whole trust system is starting to happen in me. Where it's not, it's not just for Gunnar, it's also for me. It's not just for Bonnie, it's also for Michelle. And I could go through the whole room. But, but we all have been given this. We all have been implanted. Exploding kitties, or whatever they call it. Two million dollars. You're a two million dollar kitty. You're the normal person. But, but you have access. It's not something you're searching for. It's not something that you've missed out on. It's not something that's inaccessible. It's something that's made accessible. But you need to have peace with God in order to move through the process perfectly. And I, I don't even know if I should use the word perfectly for anything except Jesus. But, but move through the process because I have peace with God. I no longer struggle the same way I used to struggle because I have peace with God. See, I used to struggle and I used to fold like paper. I used to give him right away because I... I didn't know. I didn't trust. I didn't have anything to believe in. I didn't have anything to hope for. But now I'm starting to believe this. And then your belief starts to really become a deep trust. If you lean into it, it becomes a deep trust. And what you see happen is you not only become engaged in trusting the Lord more in your day-to-day, but you start to love people and understand it's like raining Italian spit. But you get to love people and understand people better. Why? Because it's I'm not I'm not about me. I have peace with God. I'm good. I have peace with God. I'm I'm good. I know that God is for me. I know that God has me. I know that God is guiding me and guarding me. Yeah, I'm gonna have hardship. Yeah, I'm gonna experience things. Things maybe that I'm gonna have to go to the doctor for things that I'm going to have to get a loan for, things that I'm going to have to sell this or buy this for. That is material stuff that's here. But the spiritual stuff, the stuff inside you is much more important than the outside stuff could ever be. That's why he talks about stuff so much in the Bible. That's why Jesus talks about stuff because he knew that's that's where our struggle is going to be stuff, things, chatter, frequencies, noise. And the noise gets so loud that we can't even hear God's voice anymore. All we hear is our self-talk or our self-doubt. Let's stand together. Ephesians 3 verse 12 says, because of Christ and our faith in Him, we can now boldly and confidently enter into God's presence. Hebrews 4, verse 16. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us. Come on, somebody, when we need it the most. I love this message, this translation in the message. It was like like our social media post. On social media, I don't know who's in charge of our social media. Somebody is, but it was like we're tired of creating content. Just come to church. It's like we're over it. Just, why do we have to keep doing things to drag you here? You need to get your heart and your life right and get here. 
But that's what this rider is doing here. He's like giving up creativity. And he's like, I'm just going to, I'm going to kick you in the stomach. This is what he says, Hebrews 4, 16 in the message. So let's walk right up to him and get what he is ready to give. Take the mercy. Accept. Access. Accept the help. Accept the help. Accept the fact that I'm not God. He is. Thank you, God, that you are God. You are God alone. You are merciful and mighty. You reign, Lord God. You reign. You reign in my life. You reign in my mind, Lord Jesus. Father God, I, I pray that you would just to help us, heal us, Lord God, from self-talk and, and, and defeat, Lord Jesus, fighting ourselves all the time, fighting thoughts and, and, and old thoughts and old perceptions and old thought patterns and old thought ways. When our mind is, should be renewed, when our thinking is made new in you and we just need to believe it. Where we have peace with you, to believe it. When we access your grace and we need to believe it. Lord, not only we need to believe it, but we need to live like it. We li- need to live from the point of your grace. From, from standing in your grace is where we need to live. Is where we thrive, Lord God. It's a place of safety. It's a place, Lord God, where you take our weakness and you use it for your glory. It's a place, Lord God, where you take our broken pieces and you you use them, Lord God, to renew and restore and rebuild, Lord God. You waste nothing. Every story, every testimony, every trial is a testimony. Every mess is a message. I know it's cheesy, but it's true. We thank you, Lord, that you're working in us. Would you, would you just for a minute, just for a minute, we're about to get out of here. Just lift your hands if you feel comfortable. Just lift your hands to the Lord. If you lift your hands like this, it's almost like a, like a signifying, like receiving. Just receiving. Let's, let's receive from the Lord right now. Whatever it is that you're needing, whatever... It is that you're longing for, that you're looking for, that you're desiring. The Word of God says that He will grant you the desires of your heart if you seek Him above all else, if you put Him first. So maybe you're in a place where you you're, you, you you somewhat trust the Word of God but you're, you're struggling. You're struggling to take steps. You're struggling to, to, to really to, to make God a priority in your life. Lord, we surrender to you. We surrender our agendas. We surrender, Lord God, our plans, Lord Jesus. We, we need help. We need more of you. I want to be a person that just wakes up joyful, that has peace, Lord God, without without needing anything else but you, Lord God. Lord, I I want to be a person, Lord Jesus, that can pray for other people in such a way that, that produces things because I believe it. I have faith to believe it. I have faith to believe, Lord God, that your grace is good enough. I have faith to believe, Lord God, that I, I, you, you've given me a, a promise. And that promise is peace, peace with you, that you're for me and you're not against me, that you're, you're over me and you're around me, that you'll lead me, you'll go before me. Lord, I surrender to the fight. I'm tired of fighting. I don't want to fight against people anymore. I don't want to fight against this pain anymore. I don't want to fight against these problems anymore. Lord God, we ask that we, as we access your grace, that your arms of mercy, Lord God, would wrap around us. That your Holy Spirit would fill us up. joy. Lord, 
Lord God, I thank you for the healing that's happening right now, Lord God, in minds, in hearts, in bodies. I thank you, Lord God, for the renewing. I just sense it, Lord God, I know it's you. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you're doing. If you're far from God this morning and you've never asked Christ into your heart, we never let anybody go without this opportunity. We just, we're, we're, we're so strict about this one thing. If there's anything, it's this one thing that we want you to leave this place in relationship with Christ. So if that's you this morning, if you're not sure where you stand with Jesus, this is the perfect moment. If you've never asked Jesus into your heart, if you've never said, Jesus, I, I, I want you in my life, this is your moment. If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you will be saved. The promise of God is eternal life. Eternal life, salvation. As we walk through justification and all these promises of God, peace with God comes only through a relationship with Jesus Christ. No place else. So if that's you this morning, I'll, I want to pray with you. Just, just repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. I surrender to you. I believe you died on the cross and rose from the grave for me. Amen. If you said that prayer, it's done. You don't have to say yes. You don't have to wrestle with the past start looking towards the future. You could start living in the present knowing that you're at peace with God. Knowing that you have a powerful Savior watching over you, watching you, guarding you, protecting you, leading you as long as you put Him first. As long as you continue to trust Him. Amen, everybody.